Mughal painting is not the whole story of painting in South Asia at this time. So we turn to another branch of painting, which is known as Rajput or Rajasthani painting. Rajput, the sons of kings, referring to the small independent kingdoms in northwest India in around where the Mughal rulers were established. There, so I noted here that th these various kingdoms had different policies or patterns of collaboration and resistance. So some Hindu kingdoms cooperated with the Mughals as allies and tribute states. Others resisted the Mughal Islamic rule. And part of that was to patronize indigenous artistic styles. This is a prime example of the exuberantly stylized approach used by these Rajput painters. So the event it depicts, the story you are seeing, is from the Song of the Cowherd, the Gita Govinda, where the god Krishna is sitting in dalliance, is the word used by your textbook authors, lovely old-fashioned word, is flirting with, hanging out with, enjoying the company and the kind of erotic buzz of the cowherd, the gopis, the cowherd ladies, um, which is one of his favorite activities. And one in particular, Radha, his great love, is consumed with jealousy, that's why she's off to the side surrounded by blue, as all of these other ladies look at him with these enlarged eyes. So this is a painting of the Hindu theme of bhakti, which is the idea of experiencing your relationship to the divine through a, a sensation of love and devotion that would be comparable to Radha's love and devotion to Krishna. So how do you express that idea of love and devotion to a god that is like an erotic love, but actually a spiritual love? So this style does that using extraordinarily intense color. Color is what gives a sensation, a strong sensation, almost a vibrating sensation that is analogous to emotion. So you don't just look for emotion in the faces, you feel it yourself in the color relationships of this hot, warm, bold red against the deep, rich black and the, the stark blue. You also use stylization, right? So you, the eyes are delightfully exaggerated, open so wide, cartoonish, right? Because they are trying to express the intensity of the regard for of the, de the devotees for the beloved God. The, they're trying to express the gaze of love between the God and the God's followers. So you also have these marvelous sharp rhythmic lines. You have a sense of patterns. The bodies are all conventionalized. This and as are the leaves on the trees, they are conventionalized. They're not trying to look like real leaves on real trees. They are patterns. So this is an example of stylization, just like Hello Kitty. Just as she is a bold icon of ideal cuteness, perpetually waving, and her eyes are also a strange exaggeration and intensity of direct gazing. So in this, we have a sense that this is not just ordinary love. This is the extraordinary, pure, ideal love that happens with the divine, and color expresses that. Some Rajput painting does modify over time to absorb qualities from Mughal painting, as this one does, and becomes more naturalistic. And there are also some paintings that are a sort of hybrid of the two options. This painting of Krishna and Radha in a pavilion demonstrates that. You can recognize Krishna 
from his blue skin, again, a non-naturalistic color that identifies the god and expresses his divine magnificence. The artist, Zai Kishan, has painted this scene of love, again, the intoxicating magnetic eyes, as part of a Ragamala series. So Ragamala translates to Garden of Ragas. Ragas are musical modes. So here's Shujat Hussein Khan's Deepak Raga. If you continue to listen to the music, you hear how it slowly builds and gains intensity. So it is expressing absolutely this powerful, seductive moment, this quality of staring at each other, getting closer, preparing to kiss. <laughs> But it's also expressing some ideas in Indian aesthetics that link sound and music to color. So it's ragamala painting based on the idea that there are musical modes, which are called ragas or raginis. And in the paintings, each painting is accompanied by a brief caption or poem that describes the mood of the raga, which is most frequently a mood of devotion and love, because the word raga is related to the word for mood. So it is also related to the idea of color. The Sanskrit root word for raga wrong is means to color so there's this idea that the sound of the music evokes a mood and color does too so the music is often associated with the moods of different times of day or seasons and essentially the painter is attempting to evoke that complex relationship between a musical mood, a time of day, a, these, and the sensations of colors that express that entire state of mind. And to take it even further, it's also related to the idea of taste. So there's a kind of synesthesia attempted by these paintings. Synesthesia is a word that means the the joining of senses, sin, merging, aesthesia, aesthetics. There are people who have a condition called synesthesia where they actually see colors when they hear certain sounds. And this is something relatively rare and pretty cool. In a sense, what these paintings are doing is provide, attempting to provide that experience for all of us as a sense of an elevated, experience of love and aesthetics.